everyone welcome to the next session of virtual labs in this session we are taking up the second experiment of machine dynamics and mechanical vibrations lab the title of the experiment is free vibration of subly supported beam we have clicked on it this takes us to the page of the experiment you can see here various tabs have been given we will first check out the aim of the experiment. The purpose of the experiment is to determine the logarithmic decrement delta, damping ratio zeta, damping frequency omega d and natural frequency omega n of a simply supported beam under free vibration. So this aim is exactly the same as that of the free vibration of a cantilever beam. So we are going to do the same calculations again. Let's check out for a simply supported beam how it would proceed. This is the theory given. There are few learning objectives given. After completing the simulation experiment on free vibration of a simply supported beam, one should be able to model a given real system to an equivalent simplified model of a simply supported beam with suitable assumptions or idealizations. Calculate the logarithmic decrement damping ratio, damping frequency and natural frequency of the system. Find the stiffness and the critical damping of the system. Calculate damping coefficient of the system. So these are the four learning objectives and we are going to fulfill all of them using this experiment. Introduction. A system is said to be a simply supported system if it has a hinged connection at one end and roller connection in other end. So that's the basic definition of a simply supported beam. This is how a roller support would look like and this is a hinge support. So these are two diagrammatic representations of the supports to the beam. Vibration analysis of a simply supported beam system is important as it can explain and help us analyze a number of real life systems. The following few examples can be simplified to a simply supported beam, thereby helping us make design changes accordingly for the most efficient systems. Next, we'll talk about the natural frequency of a simply supported beam. When given an excitation and left to vibrate on its own, the frequency at which a simply supported beam will oscillate is its natural frequency. This condition is called as free vibration. The value of natural frequency depends only on system parameters of mass and stiffness. When a real system is approximated to a simply supported beam, some assumptions are made for modeling and analysis. We will see a few important assumptions for undamped system. The mass of the whole system is considered to be lumped at the middle of the beam. This is very important. In the previous case, when we were discussing about cantilever beam, the entire mass was considered to be lumped at one end, the free end of the beam. Here it is lumped at the center of the beam. No energy consuming element damping is present in the system. That is, it is a case of undamped vibration. There is no damping given. The complex cross section and type of material of the real system has been simplified to equate to a simply supported beam. The cross-section will be simplified to either a T-section, a C-section, I-section, L-section, a square section or a circular section so that it is easier to solve rather than any other haphazard cross-section. The governing equation for such a spring mass system without damping under free vibration is as below. Mx double dot plus Kx is zero. Here Cx dot term is not there because there is no damping and when I divide throughout by mass this equation becomes x double dot plus omega n square x is equal to 0. K is the stiffness of the system. It is a property which depends on the length, moment of inertia and Young's modulus of the material of the beam and for a simply supported beam is given by k is equal to 48 ei upon l cube. We are going to use this formula to calculate the stiffness of the beam wherein we would know the value of e for a particular material. For example, if it is steel, the value of e for steel will be known. I, we can calculate known the 
cross section and length of the beam will obviously be given to us so we just have to substitute in the formula and get the value of stiffness of the beam damping in a simply supported beam although there is no visible damper dash pot the real system has some amount of damping present in it when a system with damping undergoes free vibration the damping property must also be considered for modeling and analysis single degree of freedom mass spring damper system under free vibration is governed by the following differential equation mx double dot this is mass into acceleration plus cx dot this is the damping coefficient into velocity of the body this is the stiffness of the material and x is the displacement of the particular body at a given instant of time when i divide this entire equation by mass the first term becomes x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n square x is 0 this is just a modification of this term c we know zeta is c upon cc so c becomes zeta into cc and we know cc that is the critical damping coefficient is nothing but 2 omega n so when you multiply this term is obtained c is the damping present in the system zeta is the damping factor or the damping ratio as it is mentioned in certain cases here of the system which is nothing but the ratio of damping c and critical damping cc critical damping can be seen as the damping just sufficient to avoid oscillations at critical condition zeta is 1 for real systems the value of zeta is less than 1 which means there is going to be some amount of damping present for system where zeta is less than 1 the differential equation solution is a pair of complex conjugates the displacement solution is given by this entire equation where x0 and v0 are the initial displacement and velocity and omega d as you can see here is the damped natural frequency of the system the damped natural frequency is calculated by the formula omega d is omega n root of 1 minus zeta square if we know the value of omega d and zeta we can calculate the value of omega n which is the natural frequency of the body so this is as far as the theory is concerned next we'll go to the procedure You can see here this kind of a screen is going to appear in the simulation tab. We are going to find out the logarithmic decrement delta by using this formula: one upon n h log of x1 by x n, where x1 is the initial displacement and x n is the last displacement of the graph, and n is going to be the number of oscillations that you see. So this is what is going to appear when you start the experiment and and get the graph of it. Next, we have to calculate damping ratio zeta, whose formula is one upon root of one plus two pi upon delta the whole square. Once we know delta from the above formula, we can calculate zeta. Next, from this table, we see that for a simply supported beam, the formula for k is 48 ei upon l q. So we can use this formula for calculating the beam stiffness k in newton per meter. Next, we will find omega n by using omega t upon root of one minus zeta square using this formula. If you see in this graph window, this omega d value is known and zeta value is also known. So accordingly, we can calculate omega n. We can calculate m equivalent. That is, what is the equivalent mass for the system by using the formula k upon omega n square. and for calculating critical damping cc we'll use the formula 2 root of km and for calculating damping of the system c this is cc into zeta so that's how you're going to perform the entire experiment and tabulate the results so we will just go to the next step that is self evaluation like the previous one you can just solve this and you can just check out the answers it's very simple then we'll go for the simulation tab which is the most important one so here you can see 
the material is chosen as steel by default you can choose any other material so let's take up aluminium as we have already taken up steel in the previous case there are various cross sections here so i will be taking up cross section of square you can take up any other cross section for calculation now when you slide over this cross section you can see here the value of h is given as 150 mm the value of b is given as 150 mm and the value of i xx is given as 4218.75 cm raised to 4 and i y y is also given 4218.75 cm raised to 4 the value of area is given as 225 cm square so you get all the values or the rather the dimensions of the cross section by just sliding over the cross section if you want the value of e it is also mentioned you just have to slide over this material section you will find that for steel rho is given and the value of e is given similarly for aluminium and bronze also the various values are given for aluminium the value of e is 70.33 gigapascal when you convert this into newton per meter square you will get the value as 70.33 into 10 raised to 9 giga is 10 raised to 9 so it is 70.33 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square here the length by default is chosen as 1000 if you want you can just change this say i make this to 1150 mm the damping ratio is 0.05 let me change this to 0.4 you can see the central mass is 25 kg i'll leave it to as it is so these are certain data that i have taken from here you can already see that these values have got calculated so i'll just click on the play button this comes to rest and then i click on the graph so i also obtain the graph of the system now we will be calculating various values i have already created the list of formula here and a table so that we can just enter the values so calculating damping ratio zeta if you look here we have already chosen damping ratio so we are not calculating zeta it is directly 0.4 so that's why this graph is actually not moving and it is not required to calculate delta and zeta from here as we have already given the value we will just go for the further values and calculate the rest of them here the value of k is already found so we will just find out this value of k so that we can cross check our answer the formula is 48 ei upon lq 48 will remain as it is the value of e is 70.33 gigapascal so this becomes 70.33 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square the value of i is given as 4218.75 cm raised to 4 you can check here so when i convert this in terms of mm it will be 4218.75 into 10 raised to 4 value of l is 1150 i'm getting the answer as 93642.31 it's exactly the one which is given here so we can just write the answer 4362.311111 is there unit is newton per mm next we will calculate omega n by using this formula from the graph we can find that omega d value is given so i'll just use the value of omega d as 1153.837 Divide by root of one minus zeta square. We have chosen zeta as point four, so I get the answer as one two five eight point nine three nine three. So it's exactly the one which is given here. Unit is radians per second. Next, we'll calculate m equivalent. the formula is k upon omega n square now be careful that this is in radians per second 
and this unit of mass will be in kg. So we cannot leave this in mm. We need to convert this into meter. So it is 9364.311 into 10 raised to 3. Divide by omega n square. I get the answer as 59.083. Kg. Let's figure out if the answer is given. Yeah, it's given here. 59.083 kg. Next, we can calculate critical damping CC by using this formula. Just be careful that you are substituting this value again in Newton per meter. I'm getting the answer as 1487.63. 8.2. The unit is Newton second per meter. Last, we'll calculate damping, that is the CC into zeta. So I'll multiply the answer obtained into 0.4, and I get the value as 59505.528. The unit is again Newton second per meter. That's approximately the same answer with a little difference in the values after decimal. So that's how you obtain these values. Now suppose if I want to calculate delta, known the value of zeta, and suppose if I don't know x1 and x2, that's also possible. In this formula, just substitute zeta, you'll get the value of delta. I get the value of delta as 2.74. So that's how you can use this virtual lab for analyzing these various values and getting these answers. In the simulation, if you change the value of zeta and take it to 0.7, say you change the value of L and the central mass, these cross sections, you will get various kinds of graphs. So you can just use this and check for various other cross sections. Next in line you have an assignment given here. You can just try these two questions that are given. Also there is a quiz given here which you can solve and check out your knowledge. There is a simulation demo given. It is close to the explanation that I gave you. So you can just see this video once again. These are certain references which have been given. And finally, you have the feedback section where you can give your feedback for the experiment. And you can help the site get better with your experience. So with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood how to analyze the free vibration of simply supported beam using virtual lab. If you have any doubt, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.